This video is a sample of a series, details of which can be found at the website. An electric current results when charged particles move in one direction. The blue dots represent the charge carriers, of which electrons are the most common. In metals there are very large numbers of electrons which move easily. Due to the thermal energy of the metal, they dance and vibrate rapidly in all directions. Let's extend this bit of wire, but concentrate only on the electrons we saw in the first place. If we apply a potential difference to the ends of the wires, the electrons will still vibrate randomly, but at the same time they will drift in one direction. It is this drift which is an electric current, and the average speed with which the electrons drift is called the drift velocity. When a current flows in a conductor, the drift velocity will depend upon how many charge carriers there are. This quantity is calculated in the number per cubic meter, which in metals is a huge number of electrons. If we imagine a piece of wire and magnify it, and that the length of this wire is equal to the average distance travelled by an electron every second. Remember that the current is the quantity of charge that flows past a point every second. And if this length is the distance the charge flows in one second, then to work out the current we need to know the quantity of charge in this piece of wire. That total will depend upon the concentration of charge carrying electrons in the wire and on the volume of the wire. The volume is the cross-sectional area times the length, and the total number of charge carriers will be cross-sectional area times length times n, where n is the number of charge carriers per cubic meter. If the value of each charge carrier is q, the total charge will then be a l n q. This charge flows past in one second, and therefore must be the current i. We defined L as the average distance moved each second. Distance per second is velocity, so L is equal to V, the drift velocity. Just swapping the L for a V, we have the current I equals A V N Q. Rearranging to make V the subject of the equation gives V equals I divided by A N Q. We will use this now to calculate an example drift velocity. Metals have a huge concentration of charge carriers in the form of free electrons. In non-metals, semiconductors and electrolytes, the charge carriers may not be electrons. For example, they may be positive or negative ions, or holes in the lattice. But if we continue with copper, with an example of a piece of wire which is 0.5 mm in cross-sectional area, and carrying a current of 5 amps. Using our equation, the velocity of the electrons will be the current, divided by the number of free electrons per cubic meter, multiplied by the charge on each of those, multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the wire. That velocity works out at a snail-like 7.4 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. That's less than a millimeter every second. Copper is particularly rich in free electrons. The number of charge carriers in, for example, a semiconductor is far fewer, perhaps one millionth. Therefore, to carry a significant current, the drift velocity has to be a lot higher. Details of all the videos in this series, together with further examples, can be found on the website. Thank you for watching.